so that's the loss, right? I grieve this loss. Like I really am like, I was not mothered well, you know, and I have this longing for my mother, right? So inside the grieving, there's this longing, which is often what keeps us attached to our mother is this like longing for this thing. Like she's not actually able to give me, but this like, this mm. kind of suffering of like, I have to keep like, I can't even really like acknowledge what she did because I actually really need her to love me, right? There's like this longing there, right? And then the part of me that's identified with her, right? Like when we're grieving, like grief is like a death process for the living. When we actually fully grieve something, like we a part of us dies. It's how we metabolize pain mm. and like come back into wholeness, right? So like I, the part of me that's like attached and identified with this like suffering and with this mother and with not being loved, not being good enough, like she has to, she, she dies in the grieving process, right? And so it's like this snake shedding skin, right? It's just like sloughs off. And then we just start to, every time we go through that cycle, we just feel more and more worthy. And then there isn't this like mental gymnastics of like trying to convince myself that I'm worthy because I'm like letting that part of me really grieve and let go and let go of the identity, right? That I don't actually need to hold on, to, hold on to that identity. And I think that can get really scary, right? Because like our you know, we live our whole life with this identity. Like this is the energy of who I am in relationship to my mother and to let that's an ego death. And I think anytime we start to do that kind of work, we come to a place where um, we meet the part of us that's never been loved before, which is oh. where I think that you're, this is the spiral, right? It starts at loss and then we spiral into longing, right? And then we start to come to like sort of this, um, which is like echo, you know, this longing for this thing that's never there because like all these layers like really translate to how we end up in relationship with people, you know, and then the, there were mm -hmm. layers of grief that were higher, like more surface that I, but now we're getting to the places when I said it was my blind spot, I can now honestly say to myself, no, I've grieved plenty, but I'm afraid of the grief that's coming next. It feels mm -hmm. really big. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, that's part of like, we're always spiraling in and out. And I think it's, that's why I, I like this, you know, just even thinking about it as a spiral because it helps us get comfortable, you know, that like we can do all this personal work. And then I think it's very, very natural that at some point we actually hit the core stuff, right? Because we're always spiraling down into our stuff and out and down into our stuff and out. I mean, that's just like the pattern of how we evolve and it's a pattern in nature, you know, everything in nature grows in spirals and like, we're really no different. Yeah. I mean, I think that the journey of self-love is really deep and it's really profound. And I think sometimes the places that we have the hardest time loving can sort of be like, you know, a little like nudge from our unconscious, like, oh, here is a place where, you know, there might be a lingering mother wound or some grief and is all it's unmetabolized grief. Right. And like when the grief gets turned in on ourselves, then that becomes the inner critic that becomes the self-hatred that becomes the stuff. So when we find that inner critic voice, you know, it can be a really beautiful sort of like like call from our psyche to be like hey like over here like actually need some love and some tending and it can 